Hey guys! So today I'm gonna be talking about 10 tips that I learned from my celebrity vocal coach. So this was a couple years ago when I did get training from him. He's actually a ballad singer. He's currently in a very famous ballad group as well. I believe he was one of the best teachers that I've ever met when it comes to vocal teaching. To be honest, if you're a trainee, especially in Korea, you don't get that much vocal training done unless you're in like the, really, I guess, the top three. Through my experiences, a lot of the times, a lot of companies focus on dancing instead of singing mostly I used to practice about six hours of vocals a day four hours about for dancing plus one hour lunchtime one hour dinner time so that equals 12 hours a day of practice so number one be showing you guys the three most important warm-ups that I do out of many but these are the three that I do every single time so the most important and easy exercise is the the tremors so I found my lowest range that I would go for normally in a song which is a D for me go to the highest that you can reach and the lowest that you can reach. This is like the first thing I do whenever I'm warming up. This really loosens up my vocal cords and my mouth as well. And then the wheeze. I love to do the wheeze because I am pretty weak at it. There are certain syllables that I just, it's harder for me to sing. It's okay, every singer's different. So the wheeze, I like to really work on. <laughs> I love to do the moss with Ma I am no way advising that I'm a professional vocal coach So I'll put a link down below some of the exercises that you could do in your home or in your studio Also, I forgot to mention one cool thing that I did when I was first starting out as a trainee One of the producers told me this tip I used to have like a very low volume when I was singing I wasn't powerful In order to train that, he would make me say like my friend's name For example, I'll say my friend's name Suji I was like, Suji, where are you? And he would make me yell that like for a couple times Suji! Like that, you would just yell your friend's name and say, Where are you? And that would just help to like make your volume like go bigger and bigger whenever you're singing. So number two, what song should you practice with? I've learned to practice with the most classic songs. So classic songs such as I used to practice Whitney Houston's I Have Nothing, um, Reflection by Christina Aguilera. These classic songs are great to practice your diaphragm, your volume, your pitch. And they don't have complicated beats, kind of like the songs out today. You know, there's a lot of hip hop mixed kind of songs, and it's so important to practice your song from the start to finish in just one go so don't chop it up and that will be so so hard at first I remember like through halfway of the song I would just my voice would break like I would lose my voice but that is good that is a good thing that means your diaphragm and your body is trying to adjust and growing I really recommend singing like Disney songs you know those songs are very classical and like very standard in rhythm and standard in pitch you know you could go from high to low I recommend not practicing with very skillful song there's a lot of like skillful songs that are out today meaning like a lot of singers with like unique voices you know like a different rhythm those songs are cool to hear but they're not really great to practice your diaphragms and your volume and things like that number three same with Korean songs try to pick any ballads or classical songs that you can sing from the start to the end and these kind of classic songs help you to train again with the diaphragms and help you with like the very root of Korea because a lot of Koreans love ballad and if you sing ballad that means like you are a Korean singer. If America has kind of like hip hop and like jazz as their soul, Korea is like ballad. I remember my teacher would tell me to practice Kim Bum Su's Pogo Shipta. So I would always practice that every day. That song is like a classic song. And it's so hard to sing from the start to the finish because you know it requires a lot of range. I found that in American songs, of course emotions are important, but it's about loudness and like you know reaching to the audience. While in Korean songs, it's about like heavy emotions and focus. So the audience will feel your sadness. Also, ballads are really, really great to practice because Korean pronunciations are so different from English because English songs are very smooth. It's easier to connect the words to the next word. So your breath kind of flows more easily. But when it comes to Korean words, Korean words are a little bit harsher and it's more like one syllable each and like very choppy. So I feel like it requires a lot more breath and a lot more power. So for example, like, here comes the wave meant to wash me away. It's like really nice and flowy. But when it comes to Korean words, you know, it's like very, very like syllables and choppy. So it's really important to practice Korean ballad songs. That way you'll get pronunciations right, you'll get the special rhythms that Koreans like to do in the ballad, and you'll really open your diaphragm to fit Korean songs. Number four, it's 
totally fine if your voice cracks. You know, when I was first singing, my voice would crack every single second, and I was like, ah! Oh my god, what the hell is wrong with my voice? Like, I'll never become a singer. But don't worry, I've learned from my teacher that when your voice cracks, it's okay because your vocal cords, muscles are moving. It's a sign of growing, so don't worry if your vocal cracks. Also, it's a sign that maybe you're doing something wrong with your diaphragm or you don't have enough strength when you're singing. So your body is just giving you signs that you are doing a good job and you just need to work on some things. It's also okay if you lose your voice. I remember when I was a trainee, I would lose my voice every single week and there was a time when I would sing so much every single day for hours and hours at end. There's no way that my voice was able to just keep up with that. Just like a cut, when you get a cut, you kind of get a harder skin. Your voice needs to get harder and stronger. So if you lose your voice, that's okay. Of course, don't purposely yell for 12 hours or you're just going to damage your vocal cords. When you're singing high notes or low notes, you need to have a lot of strength in your ab area and your stomach area. So you just need to have a lot of strength right here. So who is the girl I see staring straight back at so whenever I would be singing, I remember my teacher would always like poke me in the stomach and poke me in like my thigh area just to see if I had like super strength there. Of course, like after time, you'll get used to it and you'll know like when to put strength and when not to. But when you're first starting out and when you're practicing, it's very important to always poke your stomach and see if you have enough strength there. Do you have problems with pitch? Kind of like my mom, no offense, I love you mom, but she was kind of born with like not the ability of finding pitches, like she just can't. So it's really important to practice with the piano. So what I would do is like always if you have a song that you want to do, find the notes in the piano and just go word by word. Who is that girl I see back at me? So definitely go word by word, especially the areas where you mess up on the pitch a lot. I would practice this every single day just so I could get the pitch just perfect. Do you have problems with the rhythm? Oh my god. If some people are born without like the ability to find pitch, I was born with the ability with no rhythm in my body at all. It was so bad that my producers would just yell at me every single time I would mess up. I was just born without the sense of knowing what rhythm is. I didn't know how to like sing on time and on beat. So there's just a couple tricks that I would do which is turn on the metronome and I would just turn on and listen to this every single day like as long as I can I would be in the shower and I'll be like yep washing my hair yep washing my hair and I would sing a cappella with just the metronome swallowing sand left with nothing to say I cannot start to crumble so I would just sing a cappella just with the metronome in order to just get the timing and the beat right. If you're not born with it, just practice it and it will work. Next, try to practice in a non-echo room, kind of like this. So this room is a little bit bigger. It is soundproof, but I could hear myself a little bit. The reason why you sound so good in the bathroom is because there's echo. And where there's echo, you sound loud and you sound clear and you don't really hear your real voice. No offense. <laughs> That's why like everybody in the karaoke room sounds good most of the time. That's why you need to practice in a non-echo room where you can really just hear your raw voice. Very important to practice in various depth rooms. For example, like in your car, you sound different. In your bathroom, you sound different. In rooms like this, where it's soundproof, you sound different. So you need to know different depth of the sound and that way I was able to train myself in preparation for any stages, any type of place that I need to sing. If someone tells you to sing in the car, like, bitch, you better be ready. So I feel like it's very important to exercise if you are a leaner person like me like I have not a lot of muscle mass that means I don't have a lot of strength I remember when I was practicing and I was a trainee always the producers and my teachers would always yell at me because I wouldn't have any muscles that's why when I was dancing I would like feel very loose feel like a you know those like car balloons so definitely feel like me if you don't have much power or muscle mass try exercising and really opening your diaphragm opening your lungs and having more power in your body in order to sing powerful Especially I like to go on the treadmill that really helps to open up your like diaphragm and your lungs and your stomach as well Because you need to breathe through your stomach when you're singing the last tip is you guys Confidence this is something I lacked ever since ever since I was born I never had confidence always so shy when I was singing when I was dancing and that just got me nowhere the One thing that I learned to do is just throw away your fears throw away your fears of messing up Throw your fears away of what people think of you. You're an artist and if people don't like you, hey, that's still a growing process 
as well. So very important to come in reality with what you're good at and when you're not good at. And it's okay. Like long time ago when I was a trainee, it was hard for me to accept what I was bad at. Especially I've learned that I have a special tone in my voice. A lot of people would tell me that. So I took that and made that my strength and my like main core. I love my voice. If you love your voice, the world will love your voice. I'm not a professional vocal coach whatsoever. These are some of the tips from myself, what I've learned as a trainee and being a growing singer, along with my vocal coach that I love, love, love. So I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!